All right, you got what you wanted. Guys, after numerous requests, finally, Pure Passage offers Hajj. Experience the divine journey of Hajj, the most significant act of worship in Islam, performed on behalf of your loved ones by Pure Passage. Hajj is not only a spiritual obligation for every Muslim, but also a symbol of unity, peace and submission to Allah's will. Our devoted team of experienced sheikhs and students of knowledge will take on this holy pilgrimage on behalf of your family members who are unable to undertake this once in a lifetime journey. Our exclusive Hajj package includes the performance of the Hajj rituals, a detailed video report of the journey and a commemorative certificate marking the completion of this spiritual obligation. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Let our team take on this journey for you while honoring their legacy and providing you with peace of mind. Join us in the spiritual journey and leave a legacy that will last for eternity. Be'ith me love. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, finally, we're going to react to Prophet Muhammad. May peace be upon him again. Today, with the video, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam predicted what's happening today by the channel, The Daily Reminder. Guys, before we jump into the video, please do me the favor and like the video if you like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This truly helps with the algorithm. Thank you so much. And with no further ado, let's have a look. The Messenger of Allah predicted many things. And remember, Ya Ibad Allah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was only speaking through revelation. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ all right, we all know this surah and this surah speaks about the Quran, that the Quran is nothing but pure revelation. And I absolutely agree here. However, I personally did not think that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, always spoke in revelation. Please correct me if I'm wrong here and let me know in the comment section, guys, because as far as I know, Prophet Muhammad was a man after all. And therefore, sometimes he just spoke as him. And then other times he would receive revelation. Not all of that revelation is found within the Quran. Some of it we can find in the hadith as well. However, to say that Prophet Muhammad only spoke in revelation would be not correct in my understanding. Yet again, let me know in the comment section. Nothing but a revelation. One of the most profound hadith is a hadith al wah When he was saying this hadith, it seems as though he was looking at the condition of the ummah today. He said it's about to happen that the nation when it invites one another on you on the um when the west or europeans when they decided to deal with the world they came to the conclusion and they realized every dynasty every empire it has to come to decline at one point yes, so they study in you. this is the only true fact that you can find historically that every empire has fallen at one point so they study in UK and they said, and this is when the United Kingdom was ruling the world. So they said, how do we do this? We have witnessed the Persian Empire. We have witnessed the Roman Empire. We have witnessed the Muslim Empire. We have witnessed the Mongol Empire. We witnessed yeah. empire coming up and going down. What should we do? So they decided three things. They divided the world into three categories. The white, yellow, and green. So they decided to say when it comes to white, the legacy of power and authority has to rotate. What does it mean? It means if the United Kingdom can no longer continue carrying this message, carrying this superiority, carrying this authority over the world, then this next person must be a white person. So if the UK cannot do it, the France has to pick up. If France cannot do it, the Americans have to pick up. The second part, they say the yellow world, it's a smart move. I mean, the Asian mainly. And of course, makes sense. It even goes deeper than just being white. We are talking about the Roman Empire, and some conspiracy theorists will claim that the Roman Empire has never fallen truly, that the Roman Empire has been shifted from Rome to the UK and now finally to America. Chinese, Indians, and everybody else from Asia. They say we deal with 
mutual exchange. We give and take from them. But when it comes to Muslim world, Middle East and Africa, the green world, the rich world, the world full of resources, when it comes to that, then we have to divide them. You know, the nation, the messenger of Allah said, we call each other. As a people, we call each other to a few. I do not doubt this here whatsoever. It is probably correct. However, it is not only the Arabian world that has been conquered and divided by the West. I come from the Balkan. And if you look into the Balkan and the communistic policies that have been implied there, the UN, the NATO troops that came after the communist revolution, if you will, sending the American troops to further destabilize the Balkan. The end result is the Balkan is ruptured into many fragments, small tiny countries that hold no power whatsoever. Great scientists like Nikola Tesla. No, I'm not talking about Elon Musk and his Tesla, but the original Nikola Tesla came from the Balkans. There was an elite of smart people on the Balkans. It was a power as well that wanted to cooperate with Russia. However, they've been torn apart and now they're nobody. Number one, divide we have conquer. divided into small portions. I'm okay. from Somalia. Look what they did to us. They invited themselves to Somalia and they said this part is colonized by the French. So you no longer Somali. You are called Djibouti. They came to my part of the world and they said you're no longer part of Somalia. My wife is from Senegal and the stories she told me are absolutely ludicrous. The mother of my wife got taught in school that the Gulois, the ancient French, are the ancestors of the Senegalese in order to build a bridge in order to brainwash them into starting speaking French, into further manipulating the Senegalese to believe that they are French. The British Somali. Insane. You're no longer part of your nation. They went to the south and they said, you are Italian. You're exactly. no longer Somali. They took another part and they gave to Kenya. And they said, you're no longer a Somali Muslim. You are Kenyan. They took the fifth part and they said, you're no longer Somali Muslim. You are Ethiopian. So one of the things is to make sure that the Muslim nations are divided into small segments. I went to a remote area that was hit by the drought in Kenya. And the first thing that I saw when we landed, I saw a building on the top of the mountain. Beautiful building. I say to the brothers, before we go, I want to see what is it. What is that building on the top of the city in a place called Marsabet. So we went. Looks like North North Church. Massive church that was established in 1926. Immediately after the Khilaf al Islamiyah was destroyed, they went to the end of East Africa to establish a church. And I went and I saw nations, I saw people, communities, whom their third last name or second last name is Abdul Rahman or Abdullah or Muhammad or Umar or Ali. But the first name is Christian and the second name is Christian. So they came to these Muslims. They killed their scholars. They destroyed their tradition and legacy. And they took their children to school and turned them into Christians. I went to South sure. Africa and the Shiu I was with. They said, you know, we need to go to the washrooms, you know, before we proceed. I waited outside. A young man saw me standing with a thobe and kufi. And he came and he just is, you know, young, young African man. And he came and he said, where can I get this? The thing that you're wearing. I said, why would you want to wear one of my outfits? He said, because my grandfather, every other night, he comes to me wearing this in a mountain when everybody's wearing white and he's saying, my son, join us. So I said, are you Muslim? He said, no. Is your father Muslim? He said, no. I said, was your grandfather Muslim? And he looked down with a sad face and he said, yes, but I don't know anything about him. I said, what was he doing in your dream? He said, with his, his a lot of other That's people, they were climbing up a mountain, all wearing white, but different, little bit different of this. So I took my phone and I Googled Arafah, the day of Arafah. And I showed it to him, and he, wallahi ikhwa, he cried. He said, how did you know where my dream was? I said, your grandfather is not asking you to buy a thaw. Your grandfather is inviting you to Islam. Repeat after me, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna muhammadun rasulullah. This is what they did as far as South Africa, where we as Muslims rule once upon a time. As people invite one another on the feast. Now, why did the Messenger of Allah use food as an example? 
Because food, when you're eating and consuming, when you're devouring food, food does not challenge you. Food does not resist you. You grab that piece of chicken and you put it in your mouth and it will not fight you back. That is the condition of the Muslims. We will be eating according to this prophecy. We will be ripped apart and none of us will come to aid his brother. So one of them said, Awa min qillati yawma eden ya Rasulullah. O Messenger of Allah, is this happening to us because we are few in numbers? But the Messenger of Allah said, La, no. He said, rather you are so many, 2.2 billions. But the messenger of Is this number truly mentioned, 2.2 billion? Please let me know in the comment section. Yet again, guys, I'm learning here, therefore I have no clue if this exact number is mentioned. I heard that in the end times, the Ummah will be big, but it will be weakened. So if you know anything about this, please let me know. But they are have you ever watched a water after a rain, a water coming from high point, you know, running, a stream of water running, and on top of that water, you have brownish, dirty, dusty, you know, foam, literally traveling on the top of that running water. And that foam has no authority over itself. It just goes with the water. And look, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the description is so precise. Even the foam is not clean. It's a khutha. It's useless, useless. If the water stops, it will stop. If the water moves, it will move. If it goes left, it will go left. If it goes right, it will go right. Subhanallah, it seems that Rasulullah was describing Muslim nation in the United Nations summit. When the West or the world, rest of the world go left, we go left. If they go right, we go right. If they stop, we stop. If they say we, we attack, we attack. If they say we retreat, we retreat. 2.2. I would not even come to help one another. The prophet Absolutely correct. I would agree with this 100%. But I have to add to this that this is truly the rest of the world. Because keep in mind, there is no Christian allegiance either. If you look into America, 90% of Zionists are actually American Christians. It's really the case. And this force is not destroying only the Muslim world, but any type of country that is against the Western values. Even if you look into Poland, Poland, which is a Western country, obviously, but they're not adhering to the immigration policies and they're not adhering to the LGBT rulings. And therefore, they are being threatened with wars and what not. Keep that in mind, guys. Of course, the Western world is fighting the Ummah. 100%. However, keep in mind that we have allies as well. Everybody that is against the West will be attacked. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the in Balkans, the distance Russia, of a etc., etc. the enemy, if they learn that the messenger of Allah considering that direction, they used to be afraid in a distance of a month. But now, the messenger of Allah said, and Allah will take the fear, the mahaba, the respect from the heart of your enemy. So when an enemy of Islam wants to do something to Islam, they have they no anyway. respect, no regard. They kill Iraqi children, no respect. They destroy Libya, no respect. Yep. Killing women and children, raping women in Iraq, Libya, Syria. Everything that they want to do and they have no consideration of your feelings and my feelings and my strength and your strength because Allah took that from their hearts. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَلَا يَقْذِفَنَّ أَوْ يَجْعَلَنَّ الْوَحْنَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ أَوْ الْوَحْنَ يَجْعَلَنَّ الْوَحْنَ قُلْنَا وَمَا الْوَحْنَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ We said, what is الْوَحْنَ? قَالَ حُبِّ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَةِ الْمَوْتِ See this وَحْنَ is two things. Love of this dunya and hate of death. We all hate Deep. death. But what Deep. it means here to die for a purpose. See, when you are so much engaged and indulged in this dunya, you don't want to leave. It means you are allowing yourself to be a coward. You don't want to Absolutely correct. This directly translates into transhumanism, which stems from liberalism, of course, which stems from worshipping your own desires, which stems from comfort. People are extremely comfortable nowadays and they want to be even more comfortable. Back in the day, you used to hunt. That means you go hungry if you don't catch something. You are starving. You're looking for meat. You're looking for an animal. If you get meat, it was a good day. But look at the effort that this took. 
Then later on, you start domesticating animals. Now you have a farm that was much, much easier. But nevertheless, you have to wake up at 4 a.m., milk the cows, and then you have to slaughter them, etc., etc. You name it, it was still hard work feeding the animals. Then, of course, further industrialization, you move to the cities, and now other people are slaughtering for you. Now you can go to the grocery store, you can go to the restaurant. But even that is not enough for us. Now we're sitting on our couch watching Netflix, and we're ordering Uber Eats. Where will this go? Don't you see this progression? Don't believe for a second that it is done now. This is not the pinnacle of comfort. Yet, people will become even more comfortable. Back in the day, when I was young, we used to watch movies. And I know people still do to an extent. However, nowadays people watch TikToks. They can't even focus two, three, let alone four hours. No, they can watch something for 10 seconds. I see it in the watch time of YouTube videos as well. Not many people can watch watch a 10 minute video, a 20 minute video. People become more and more and more comfortable like that falling in love with the dunya and hating death even more so. This is where transhumanism comes into place. It offers you salvation. They will kill your body off and upload your consciousness into the cloud where you can live forever and where you can enjoy all the food and all the pornography you want. This is the promise of the atheist. You don't want to die for something that you have value for. It has value in your heart. That means you not willing to do what it is necessary for you to move forward. I want to read some Moreover, systematically, people have been removed from value, from cherishing anything. They do not worship God, they worship their own desires, and therefore, does it really matter if I eat pizza or burgers today? The prophecy it's that not shows worth dying for. Well in the society, in the community. The Prophet وسلم, he said, if my ummah made five things acceptable, then wait at the maru alayhim. He said, the day that Muslims are cursing each other. That's number one. And they start consuming alcohol. And you can see Muslim country, 100% alcohol is allowed. And they wear silk. And is they... alcohol allowed in Pakistan? I don't think so. Listen to young lady I don't know. singing music. And men are happy with men. And women are happy with women. Happy. And a man being with men, I hope you guys understand. All of these five things are things that will distract you from the actual goal. It is something that will distract you, that your life, your death, everything belongs to Allah. It's something that will distract you to uplift this deen to the way that Allah wanted. What I want to remind you all of is, yes, there's a way, but also a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, until the end of time, they would be group from my ummah, will stand for the haqq, for the truth, and they will never be defeated until the day of judgment. So in spite of all that darkness, in spite of all the parting of the kuffar, all the parting of the non-Muslims against Islam, there will always be members of this ummah who will always show the nation that is the light, that is the book of Allah, that is the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I left you on a plain, clear path. And the messenger of Allah also said, if you hold on the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will never go straight. So to overcome all this, to overcome all this fitna, hold on to the book of Allah and follow the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video, a longer one. I hope you made it all the way through. Probably 80% or more dropped out already because of short attention span, because of seeking comfort, because of seeking dopamine hits. Most people now are already on their phone again, clicking through shorts, or they're on TikTok seeking what is pleasurable. Yet again, what makes me feel more comfortable? What makes me feel good? And this is truly the society that we're living in. Don't you see human rights, animal rights? rights, sex rights, whatever. All of this is absolute bunk because all of it only appeals to what feels good. Hey, does it feel good to you when you have sex with another man? For some it does and therefore it is good. Does it feel good to you when you're eating junk food? Yes, it does. Just keep on going with it. Does it feel good to you when you're smoking cigarettes, when you're drinking alcohol? Feels good? Go for it. This is your freedom. You can do it. Why would we restrict you? We are not a totalitarian government. No, no, no. No, but when it comes down to religious expression, true religious expression, 
You will be called a bigot, a terrorist, an extremist. No, that is not to be practiced whatsoever. This infringes upon our rights all of a sudden. Already does it. Just because a woman is covering, for example, this is already a thorn in the eye of the Westerners. But if you want pants, so-called hot pants, nothing hot about your butt hanging out. It's very vulgar and disgusting. But you can absolutely go for it. No worries whatsoever. Please express yourself. It is absolutely no problem. It doesn't matter that Bobby is walking outside there with his son of two years old and a half-naked lady passes by. No worries, Bobby. Don't be a bigot. Don't be a terrorist. Please. How can you be against this? This is her freedom. Absolutely. And like this, you are tweaking society and you're degenerating society and you're weakening society. Society right now is only going after what feels good, as I said. And therefore, they cannot be concerned with death because death does not feel good. Even the thought of it doesn't feel good. Judgment of an almighty Lord of an almighty God, that does not feel good either. So therefore, it doesn't exist out of sight, out of mind. Those people are only concerned with what brings them pleasure. And if you're seeking pleasure, we can be reminded of the Quran again. Have you seen the man that has taken his own desires as God? This is really what it boils down to, guys. Don't you see how powerful this phrase is? People have been removed from God and now they make everything other their God. Now the system becomes God. Now sex becomes their God. Now drugs become their God. And like this, they're easy to steer. Don't you understand that the government made you a puppet for their interest? You think you're free because it feels good. But it is a trap. The mouse thinks it feels good to eat the cheese. But then it gets caught and killed. This is how it works. And the same will happen to you if you do not return to God. All right, guys. But this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.